Hi everyone, my name is Xavier Davis and I am a nutritionist with the Nutrition Education Training and Technical Assistance Division at USDA Food and Nutrition Service in the Child Nutrition Program. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on how to support breastfeeding in the CACFT. This webinar is part of Team Nutrition's monthly CACFT Hat Time 30 on Thursdays webinar series. These webinars are held on the third Thursday of every month in both English and in Spanish. The English webinar is held from 2 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and the Spanish webinar will be held from 3 to 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. These webinars will be recorded and made available at a later date on the Team Nutrition website. We will have time at the end of this webinar to take questions. You can use the chat box at any time during the webinar to enter your questions, and we will answer as many as we can at the end of the webinar. If you are having difficulty hearing us through your computer speakers, you can call in by phone. Please dial 866-740-1260. When prompted, enter the access code 605 4013. Once again, thank you for joining us for today's webinar on how to support breastfeeding in the CACFT. The next webinar will be held on September 20th, where we will discuss feeding infants starting with solids, and then on October 18th, we will talk about how to identify whole grain rich foods for the CACFT using the ingredient list. Before we get started, we would like to know who you are. Please go ahead and select one of the following listed on the slide. Let us know if you are a child care center, family child care home, at risk after school care center, adult daycare center, sponsoring organization, emergency shelter, school food authority, state agency, USDA regional office, or other. It's great to have all of you here with us today. Thank you for joining us. We are also interested in learning how long you have been working with the CACFP. This includes those of you who are caring for infants and children during the day, those of you who may be responsible for planning menus and preparing meals, as well as those of you who may have administrative functions, such as tallying creditable meal counts and submitting claims. Please go ahead and select one of the following listed on your slide. Zero to two years, two to five years, five to eight years, eight to 10 years, or 10 years or more. Great, it's nice to see that we have some seasoned CACFP operators with us today, as well as some new ones. Now let's take a closer look at today's topic. How to support breastfeeding in the CACFP. As many of you know, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, breast milk is the best source of nutrition for babies, and it is the only food healthy babies need for about the first six months of life. Additionally, the recently released WIC breastfeeding campaign encourages breastfeeding mothers to breastfeed as much as they can for as long as they can exclusively for six months and up to a year if possible. Mothers often choose to breastfeed because it benefits the infant, the mother, and the family. Breastfed babies may have a lower risk of asthma, fewer ear and lower respiratory infections, lower risk of sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS, lower risk of becoming obese, fewer infections that cause vomiting and diarrhea. Also, babies taste different flavors in breast milk based on what the mother eats. This may help babies accept new flavors from solid foods more easily. Breastfeeding mothers, breastfeeding may help the mother have less blood loss after childbirth, feel more relaxed, have lower risk of ovarian and certain types of breast cancer, have lower risk of type 2 diabetes, and Skin-to-skin -skin contact during breastfeeding may help moms and babies bond. Lastly, breastfeeding can help the family financially. 
They may be able to save money because they do not have to buy infant formula, and they may miss fewer days of work or school since the baby may be sick less often. Because of the many benefits associated with breastfeeding, mothers often choose to continue to breastfeed their infants when they return to work or school. Therefore, CACFP operators regularly care for breastfed infants. The updated CACFP infant meal pattern supports mothers who choose to continue to breastfeed when their infant is enrolled in childcare. The CACFP supports breastfeeding mothers by providing reimbursement for meals when a mother chooses to breastfeed on site, by encouraging mothers to supply breast milk for their infants while in child care, and by promoting CACFP best practices, which includes offering a quiet, private, comfortable, sanitary area for mothers to breastfeed or pump when they come to the child care site. Be sure to talk to breastfeeding mothers to see if they plan to breastfeed at pickup. If they do, ask if they would like you to wait to feed the baby if the baby is hungry right before pickup time. This can help make sure that the baby is hungry enough to nurse once mom arrives. Remember, when a mom nurses her baby at your child care site, the breast milk that the baby gets from nursing can count towards a reimbursable meal or snack in the CACFP infant meal pattern. Breast milk, whether the baby gets it from nursing or a bottle, credits at all meals and snacks for infants and can also credit towards the fluid milk requirement for children over the age of one, one year. A written request from the parent does not have to be kept on file to serve the breast milk to a child one year or older. As I mentioned earlier, the updated CACFP infant meal pattern allows a child care site to receive reimbursement for a meal or snack if the mother breastfeeds on site. As a CACFP best practice, child care sites are encouraged to offer a quiet, private area that is comfortable and sanitary for mothers who come to the center or daycare home to breastfeed or pump. The space could be a small room, the corner of a classroom, or an office with a privacy screen or curtain. The space can include drinking water, a sink to wash hands and pumping equipment as needed, a pillow to support the baby while he or she is feeding, disinfectant wipes to clean up before and after pumping, a table to place pumping equipment and other personal supplies, an electrical outlet for the breast pump, a footstool to help support the mom's back while nursing, and a comfortable chair. Parents may have questions about how to safely bring breast milk to the child care site. Ask parents to bring breast milk to the child care site in a cooler with ice packs to keep it cold. The bottles or bags of breast milk should be labeled with the baby's first name, last name, and the date the breast milk was pumped. If the breast milk was thawed at home, then the bottle should be labeled with the date it was thawed. The breast milk should be kept in the refrigerator until it is time to feed the baby. It is recommended that bottles be placed at the back of the refrigerator where the temperature is usually colder and not on the door of the refrigerator where the temperature can be affected by opening and closing the refrigerator door. Some parents may also supply frozen breast milk. How you handle the frozen breast milk will depend on whether or not it will be fed to the infant in your care on the day you receive it or if the parent is providing it as a backup supply to be used on days when the baby wants more to eat than what he or she usually consumes. If it will be used the same day, you can place it in the refrigerator to thaw. If it is being provided as a backup supply, it should be placed in the freezer. You want to make sure you properly receive and store breast milk at your child care site. The breast milk should be trans transported in a cooler with ice packs. If you are putting the breast milk in the refrigerator, Make sure the refrigerator is at or below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 4 degrees Celsius. Child care sites participating in the CACFT can keep freshly pumped breast milk in the refrigerator for up to three days or 72 hours from the time it was pumped. 
We realize that this time frame is different than the guidance provided for storing breast milk at home. Please remember that the guidance and information we are providing is specifically for CACFP operators in a child care setting. We encourage you to have discussions with the parents about how they would like you to handle breast milk that can no longer be served based on CACFP breast milk storage guidelines. The parents may ask that you return it to them so they can feed it to the infant at a later date, or they may ask you to discard it. The storage times and temperatures here are adapted from the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine's Clinical Protocol Number 8, Human Milk Storage Information for Home Use for Full-Term Infants, which was revised in 2017. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention also use this updated guidance on their website under the heading Proper Storage and Preparation of Breast Milk. If your state or local authorities have stricter regulations for storing food, including breast milk, please be sure to follow those regulations. Now let's have a quick knowledge check. How long can child care sites participating in the CACFT store freshly pumped breast milk in the refrigerator? Is it one day, 24 hours, six months, three days, or 72 hours, or it cannot be stored? Great job. The correct answer is three days or 72 hours. As I mentioned earlier, this guidance may be different than what parents follow at home. These guidelines are specific to the CACFP. We encourage you to have discussions with the parents about how they would like you to handle breast milk that can no longer be served based on CACFP breast milk storage guidelines. Again, the parents may ask you to return it to them so they can feed it to the infant at a later date or they may ask you to discard it. If you are placing bottles of breast milk, you accept it from the parent in the freezer. You want to make sure the freezer temperature is at or below zero degrees Fahrenheit, which is about negative 18 degrees Celsius. Child care sites participating in the CACFP can keep freshly pumped breast milk in the freezer up to six months, but, not to use, but it should not be used after 12 months. Whether you are storing the freshly pumped breast milk in the refrigerator or the freezer, you want to make sure that it is properly labeled with the baby's full name and date it was pumped. When thawing breast milk at your child care site, only thaw the amount of breast milk needed for one feeding to reduce waste. You can always thaw more breast milk if the baby is showing signs of hunger. However, remember that breast milk that has been stored in the freezer for 12 months or more should not be used. Frozen breast milk can be thawed by placing it in the refrigerator overnight in a container of warm water or under warm running water. Breast milk should not be thawed at room temperature or by mixing the frozen breast milk with warm, freshly pumped breast milk. Lastly, never thaw or heat breast milk by placing it in boiling water or heating in a microwave. Heating the breast milk in this way damages some of the important nutrients in the breast milk. Using these methods can also cause the breast milk to become very hot and this could burn the baby, even if the bottle feels cool to the touch. Thawed breast milk can remain at room temperature for no more than one to two hours or in the refrigerator, refrigerator for up to one day, 24 hours. The bottle of thawed breast milk should be labeled with the baby's full name, the date the breast milk was pumped, and the date the breast milk was thawed. Regardless of how the breast milk was thawed, never refreeze thawed breast milk. Okay, time for another quick knowledge check. A bottle of breast milk should be labeled with the baby's full name and the date the breast milk was pumped and or thawed, true or false. Great job, the correct answer is true. A bottle should always be labeled with the baby's full name and the date the breast milk was pumped. If the breast milk is being thawed, the label should be updated with the date the breast milk was taken out of the freezer and thawed. 
And because you guys are doing so well, we're going to give you another quick knowledge check. How can a child care provider safely thaw frozen breast milk? Can it be done by placing the bottle in boiling water, placed in the refrigerator to allow it to thaw overnight, thaw at room temperature for up to four hours, or heat in the microwave? You guys are on a roll, great job. The correct answer is place in the refrigerator and allow it to thaw overnight. The child care provider could also place the frozen breast milk under warm running water or place the bottle in a container of warm water. When preparing a bottle of breast milk for an instant feeding, do not place the bottle in the microwave or in a pan of boiling water. The heat can damage important nutrients in the milk and hot breast milk can burn the infant. You also want to be mindful of how long breast milk, whether it's freshly pumped, taken out of the refrigerator, or thawed, can remain at room temperature. Remember our chart from earlier. Breast milk that has been thawed can be left out at room temperature for no more than one to two hours. If it is put in the refrigerator after it has been thawed, then it is good up to one day or 24 hours. Bottles of breast milk should remain in the refrigerator until it is time to feed the baby. Babies should be fed when they show signs of being hungry. Talk with parents about what signs their baby may show when he or she is hungry. You may notice that breast milk does not look or smell like infant formula. Breast milk may look slightly blue, yellow, or even green in color, and it may look thinner than formula. Breast milk usually looks thin when the creamy part of the breast milk has risen to the top. If you see this separation, gently swirl the bottle to mix the layers. Do not shake. Shaking the breast milk can destroy important nutrients. You do not have to warm the bottle of breast milk before serving it to the infant. However, if the infant prefers warm breast milk, be sure to warm it properly. The bottle of breast milk can be warmed by placing it under warm running water or placing it in a container of warm water immediately before serving. If you are serving the baby a bottle that has been warmed, make sure it is not too hot. Do not put cereal or other food in the bottle. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, putting cereal in the bottle can be a choking hazard. It can also cause the baby to gain weight too quickly. If cereal is mixed with breast milk or infant formula, the child care site cannot claim the cereal or the breast milk or infant formula in the bottle unless this practice is supported by a medical statement signed by the baby's health care provider. The statement must be kept on file in a secure location at the child care site. And we have talked about storing breast milk and preparing bottles. Now let's talk about how to bottle feed the breastfed baby. Always hold the baby during a feeding. Do not prop the bottle up on a pillow or other items for the baby to feed him or herself. Propping the bottle may cause choking or suffocation as well as ear infections and tooth decay. Hold the baby in the cradle of your arm so that he or she is almost upright. This helps, helps keep the baby secure it also lets you see if the baby is showing signs of hunger or fullness. This position can also help prevent the baby from choking or from getting too much liquid at once. Once you have, have the baby positioned correctly, brush the nipple of the bottle across the baby's upper lip. Wait for the baby's mouth to open before feeding. It can be helpful to use a slow flow bottle nipple and hold the bottle mostly sideways. This helps the baby control how much he or she eats and can reduce spit up. Remember to burp the baby during the feeding. Burping can occur during natural breaks in the feeding or at the end of the feeding. This can be done by gently patting or rubbing the baby's back while he or she is resting on your shoulder or sitting on your lap. It is also helpful to switch which arm you use to hold the baby. Every so often during a feeding, switch the baby from one arm to the other so the baby has different things to look at. 
This can also help the baby continue to enjoy feeding on both sides, something that is important when breastfeeding. Lastly, stop the feeding when the baby shows signs of fullness. It is important to remember that baby's feeding habits change and they may not always finish all of the breast milk in the bottle. If the baby does not drink all of the breast milk during the feeding, the leftover breast milk should be discarded within one to two hours after the feeding or handled according to the parent's wishes. That concludes the information portion of our webinar for today. We will take questions in a few minutes, so please go ahead and start typing them now into the chat box on your screen. While you guys are getting your questions answered, I will go over some post-webinar housekeeping information. Those of you attending the webinar for the entire 30 minutes today will receive a certificate via email by the end of the day on Tuesday, August 21st. Please wait until after August 21st and check your spam or junk mailboxes before inquiring about your certificates. If you are viewing the webinar with multiple people, you can print out a certificate for each person. More practice questions are available at the National CACFP Sponsors Association website at www.cacfp.org backslash 30 on Thursdays. For those of you who want to submit or track continuing education credits with NCA, you can do that at this link as well. Again, it is www.cacfp.org backslash 30 on Thursdays. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available on the Team Nutrition website. If you are watching this as a recorded webinar and want to receive a certificate, you can go to the National CACFP Sponsors Association website at www.cacfp.org backslash 30 on Thursdays to complete the post-webinar questions and then receive a certificate. The certificates may be sent a few days after completing the questions. Once again, thank you for joining us for today's webinar on how to support breastfeeding in the CACFP. The next webinar will be held on September 20th where we will discuss feeding infants starting with solids. And then on October 18th, we will talk about how to identify whole grain rich foods for the CACFP using ingredient lists. Finally, please feel free to visit our website, subscribe to our monthly e-newsletter, connect with us via email at teamnutrition at fns.usda.gov, and follow us on Twitter. And now we will take some questions. In the room with me are Katie Hallis, Mimi Wu, and Kenya Pennington, three colleagues here in child nutrition who will help me with answering your questions today. Great, great. Thank you, Debbie. Great job. Hi, everyone. This is Nini. Um, and so the first question for a um, presenter and our other team is that if a mother breastfeeds her 13-year-old or 13-month-old <laughs> or older child, uh, we're very inclusive, you know. So if a mother breastfeeds her 13-month-old or older child at my daycare site, can this breast milk count towards the fluid milk component of a reimbursable meal? Yes, breast milk can replace the fluid milk requirement for children of any age. If a mother breastfeeds her baby at your child care site, the meal is reimbursable and a written request for this substitution is not required. Wonderful, thank you. All right, our next question. Is a meal still reimbursable if a baby in my care gets both breast milk and infant formula? Yes. Meals served to babies younger than 12 months of age may include iron fortified infant formula, breast milk, or both at the same meal. Great, great. So we could do a little bit of both. Yes, very open. Okay. Um, the third question, mom doesn't have time to breastfeed on site, but drops off freshly pumped breast milk on her lunch break. Can I add this to the breast milk I already have from her that's being stored in the refrigerator? Okay. If the freshly pumped breast milk is going to be added to the refrigerated bottle of breast milk, then it must be cooled first. Do not add freshly pumped breast milk to a bottle of cold breast milk. In this scenario, cool the freshly pumped breast milk that the mother dropped off at lunchtime before adding it to the bottle of breast milk that you already have in the refrigerator. Okay, great. So you can serve both. But you you want could to serve both, but you want to make sure you cool down the freshly pumped mm -hmm. breast milk before adding it to the breast milk that you already have. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. 
Okay, so um, some other questions. So um, I just had a coworker ask, so this was someone from the audience, I just had a coworker ask if breast milk needs to be stored in bags. That's a great question. So this is Katie Hallis with Team Nutrition as well, so I'll go ahead and take that question. Um, so breast milk can be stored in bottles or breast milk storage bags. I don't want to just say bags because, you know, when we say bags, we're thinking about Ziploc bags and all of those that may or not be food safe or grocery <laughs> store bags. Yeah. So definitely not just bags in general, but bottles of breast milk um, can be used as well as breast milk stored in breast milk storage bags. So storage bags specific for breast milk storage use. Great, great. Thank you, Katie. Okay, another question. How do you document if a parent chooses to breastfeed beyond one year? Can providers still claim that meal if nursed on site? Okay, so I'll go ahead and answer that second question first. So yes, um, if mom comes to breastfeed on site, um, they, that meal can be claimed, uh, that breast milk can be claimed as part of a reimbursable meal or snack. And how you document that, um, check in with your sponsoring organization or state agency to see how they would like you to document that. Right, because different states and sponsors may have different requirements. Exactly. Okay, um, and then someone asked, is there a place we can access the storage guidelines slide? So that's a great question. So we are recording this webinar. So that chart will be available through the recording and uploaded to our Team Nutrition um, website at a later date. It's also on the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention um, breast milk storage website web page. There's a chart there. Great. Great. Thanks, Katie. And that's something we can send out in the post-webinar email as well. We can send out the link to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. Um, and then uh, someone asked, uh, can you explain how breast milk is reimbursable? So that's just something good to have a reminder of. Yeah, so just a general overview, like we talked about last month, so the CACSC infant meal pattern um, for, you must, it, you must, the requirements are that you must um, offer an infant four to six fluid ounces of breast milk for breakfast, lunch, or supper, and snacks. That's for your infant zero through five months. Um, and those for six through 11 months, um, it's six to eight, a minimum of six to eight fluid ounces for breakfast, lunch, or supper, and two to four fluid ounces for snack. So again, that's just offering. They don't have to eat all of it at, the, at one meal. Great. Thank you, Katie. Okay, another question. Can a daycare take frozen breast milk from a parent that is dated more than a year old? Due to food safety concerns, and like we covered in the in the webinar, um, do not take breast milk that is um, frozen for more than a year old. As we mentioned in the chart, um, using breast milk that's been frozen within six months is best. Um, up to 12 months is fine. So after that 12 month mark, I would not accept it. Great, great. Okay. Um, do childcare providers receive training information on signs of infant hunger and fullness? I am so glad you asked this. So last month we did um, cover a lot about hunger and fullness use for infants. And so we will have that uh, webinar recording up on our Team Nutrition website soon, um, most likely next week. So that is late breaking news for you all, so check in on that. Um, we are also updating our feeding infants in a child and adult care food program guide, which covers a lot about hunger and fullness cues. And so that will be coming out later this fall. Great, great. Thank you. And we'll put the link to the webinar recording or the page where you'll find the webinar recording in the uh, post-webinar email as well. Um, okay, and then uh, someone asked, I heard if a baby does not finish the bottle within one hour, you can put it back in the fridge for later use. Is this true with breast milk? Okay, so let me clarify the guidelines for that. So according to the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine, um, breast milk can be used up to two hours or within two hours after a feeding. Um, and so like we uh, showed on that chart there, that is countertop refrigerator um, up to two hours. So use that breast milk after, within two hours after a feeding. Okay. Okay, and then um, again, someone just asked, and this is just a good one to repeat because I know people do different things. Does pump breast milk need to be delivered and stored in bags? Is it okay to receive it in sealed bottles? Definitely. So that's a great question. So if it's stored in a breast milk um, storage bag specifically, that's great. So storage bag specific to breast milk, 
or bottles. Um, but check with your child care licensing because they may also have stricter rules as well around uh, receiving breast milk. Okay, great. And that's all the time we have today, so I'll just turn this back over to Zabriera to wrap up. Okay. Thank you guys for all of your great, great questions. If you have additional questions or need more clarification on any topics we discussed today, please contact your state agency or sponsoring organization. That is all the time we have to, for today, but please know that we do read all of your chat box questions and comments, as well as the comments in the post-webinar survey in order to continually improve these webinars and meet your needs. Thanks again, and we look forward to seeing you all on our next webinar on September 20th.